So I would like to talk about a relationship that I found between the Antibo Quad formulas and the Robbins uh, formula. So let me talk about what these formulas are. So first of all, uh, let's talk about the Antibo Quad formula. And this comes with a straight line. So this is a line. And then we have endpoints here. Uh, arbitrarily distributed. And then um, in between these points, I have coordinates. Coordinates, let me call them Q1. This is Q2. And etc. This is Qn minus 1. And uh, this is cyclic, so um, the quadrants here is Qn, and then so define Qk as the quadrants between um, Ak and Ak plus 1, where An plus 1 is defined to be A1. So this is mod. You can take this as a mod and or cyclic um, definition. And uh, what I want to show here is that there's a polynomial. There has to be a polynomial where um, f times, f, I mean not the times, f of q1 up to q n equals zero f polynomial then this is called the um antipo quad formula and f is called the um antipo quad function okay so for example for n equals say three then the um oh I'm sorry, I think I need to put an n here. So um F three where there would be three coordinates is equal to for q1 q2 minus q1 plus q2 minus q3 squared and then this would be the um, triple quad formula so f3 equals 0 would be the triple quad formula and uh, etc and then uh, second thing is what we call the Robbins formula so Robbins formula means uh, uh, it's a formula I mean there are and I mean no for each uh, cyclic polygon with n sides so let's have a circle here and let's say we have quadrants circumquadrants k and we inscribe in this circle a cyclic n gun. So, for uh, for example, we have a cyclic pentagon here. And we decide to name those um, coordinates uh, similarly. So, let's say we have a1 here, a2 here, a3 here, a4 and then a5 for example so uh, if we have endpoints then we do the same thing here then we call these coordinates similarly so we just call this q1 q2 up to qn oh this should be q4 so uh, and then q k is equal to I mean defined as the coordinates 
between a k and a k plus one, and where a k a n I mean a n a n plus one is defined to be a one, and uh, then Robin's formula is the f uh, this formula. Robin's formula means Oh no, I need to introduce some more things first. And let's say um, we have a notion, I mean, a notion of area, or signed area. So, uh, and by the way, uh, these points do not have to be lying this, on the circle in this sequence. It could be concave, if you like, or non-convex polygon. So I could have A5 here, which would create another uh, pentagon, but that would not be convex. And similarly here, we have five endpoints, right? We do not have to make sure that A1, I mean A2 lying between A1 and A3. A3 can be lying between A1 and A2. Uh, here, we, it's the same thing. But um, there's something that I have to say. Uh, we have defining, I mean, we are defining an area notion which would be called denoted A, and this is called the quadria, and it's defined as the 16 times the area squared quadria. So if A is the quadria of this polygon, then Robin's formula is such that our n of this quadria equals zero. And uh, usually this Rn is uh, polynomial, is usually um, called the Heron-like or Heron polynomials. But uh, usually we call them Robin's polynomial now. Homonomials. Because this is the notion used by Robbins himself. Um, okay. So what do we do next? Well, we consider something like this. If I, ca I can decompose or construct or deconstruct. So let's say we have a center, circumcenter here. And then we have a, I will use a psychic uh, pentagon as an example. Then I divide using the center as the point, as a starting point. We can divide the uh, second pentagon, which is not necessarily regular, into n triangles. So what does that mean? Um, well, if I have n triangles, then we have n quadrias. Or triangles. So, for example, this I call this. Um, let's say this is a one. So let's a one, a two, a three, a four, and a five. Let's say. Then um, these are quadria one, quadria two, quadria three, quadria four, and quadria five. Then I can divide the quadria into five parts, right? The point is that if I have these five uh, quadrias, then I would think of something like this. This is an analogous to things like this. I can call this Q1, E1, E2, etc. I call it like like this, because um, I can say that if I consider distances along this straight line, then distances are well defined here. Then the uh, because if I have coordinates here, then a one to a n are say let's say rational numbers. 
or in extension fields, then perhaps we will have to introduce more notions. But um, let's stick to the rational numbers first. Then these uh, distances add up to become a n. Um, I mean, uh, or the distance between one a1 and an. And then here we have this almost the same thing. But we have first, we have, we have area, but it is squared. So this is, if I add up all the area, then I have the uh, quadria of the whole uh, polygon, which is a. Okay, so let's say the whole polygon has quadria a. So uh, when we say area, we mean signed area. Um, we will not talk about the absolute value of area because that's not kind of meaningful here. So uh, this is the situation here. We have almost the um, uh, antipode quad formula. Almost. So what we have here is, let's say we have uh, n points. No, in fact, n plus 1 points. So let's de call this point B1 up to B n plus 1. Then this quadria is... I mean, well, what does that mean? Um, that means that if I have the formula f n plus one, n plus one, uh, let's see. Um, Wait, I think I missed something. This is a little bit uh, confusing. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This is a little bit confusing. Um, our n of a is, of course, zero, but this our n, this Robbins formula, does not only assert a to become zero, um, because our n should depend on q1, q2, up to qn. So I should write like this instead. So we have n plus 1 variables here. What this formula was telling you is that, um, well, it tells you how to find the quadria of this polygon from the given coordinates. And this polygon has to be um, cyclic. Or con uh, these endpoints are concyclic, concyclic, and that's that's uh, what what Williams formula tells you. So, let's say here we have f n plus one, then uh, we have well f n plus one because I have a similar uh, this this con this condition this situation is analogous to this situation we have uh, where we have n plus one point, and then we have uh, n. Let's let they call them. Let's call them coordinates. And these coordinates are given by a one, a quadria one, quadria two, up to quadria n. And this b one to b n plus one has let's say coordinates. Uh, curly a. We call that curly a usually. And then by the n to quad formula or n plus one uh, to both quad, n plus one to both quad formula, we have. Uh, this. And because the these points are in fact in fact very symmetric. So these points are symmetric. So uh, 
what that means is that I can switch F B n plus one with B n minus one, and we still have the same answer. I mean, we these quotients we say still satisfy this formula, uh, and uh, of course that 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 quotients will change, but the formula will be will still will still be the same because we can switch the order. What I mean is that this a is symmetric if all these these quadrias. Okay, so that that's a very important point. This quadria um, are the these quadrias are the uh, isosceles triangles that are formed with size as diameter. Uh, I mean radius is uh, radii, and this as the normal um, the side of a polygon. So this is the n-tuple formula, and it will call it formula. How can I relate this to the Robbins formula? Well, then I have to split the polygon into isosceles triangles. Let's say we have point um, C here as the center, the circumcenter of the polygon. And let's say the, we have X and Y. And this is the quadrants R. This is quadrant uh, K, the circum quadrants. And this is another K because um, this is a circle, and I mean the circumcircle of the polygon. And these two are the um, points on the angle, the cyclic angle. And then uh, I draw a perpendicular, draw a perpendicular here. So let's call this midpoint. So M is the midpoint of X and Y. And um, then the quadrants of X and M is given by R over 4 because these quadrants and these quadrants together makes, uh, make a quadrant of R. So I have to divide by 2 in distances if you like, but in quadrants is, or in areas, if I consider this squared area, I mean uh, no, not squared area, the area. So which you can think of as the distance squared, then this is the uh, larger r. Yeah, square has area like r, and then this square has only area one quarter of that r. And uh, okay, um, let's go. With, uh, let's go at a slower pace, so that I can follow what I'm doing here. Um, and then what I have here is that. I want to find this quadria, let's say, um, I should use curly B for this quadria. So what is B? B is 4 times K squared times S. What is S? S is this quadrant. Let's, uh, not a quadrant, spread. Let's say spread. So spread. this spread S is the spread between uh, Cx and Cy. And uh, let's introduce more spreads. We call these spreads R. So let's introduce R as um, the spread between X C or CX and CM, which would be equal to CM and CY spread because of the properties of the uh, isosceles triangle. And note that 4R times 1 minus R, which is the second spread polynomial applied to R, would in fact be S, because these um, two spreads of R makes a spread of S. And then, um, so B, the curly B, would be um, 4K squared times 4R, 1 minus R. I mean, 16k squared r, 1 minus r. So what I want to do now is to consider what r is. But, uh, uh, in the f I mean, expressing r, I mean, uh, little r in terms of big r and big k. So consider this triangle. This is a right angle triangle. And this is a spread of 
alpha 4 because this is the same spread here which is the midpoint right so this is alpha 4 and uh, the spread r is equal to alpha 4 divided by k and so b Well, what would B be? B would be 16k squared times R divided on R on 4k, 1 minus R on 4k. And uh, this could simplify. Simplify uh, This 4k cancels with this 4k, and this 4k cancels with this 4k. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, let me think. That would be R times four K minus R. So this would be the uh, quadria of this little triangle here, and uh, so what do we do now? What do we do now? Um, So, let me think. Um, okay. Well, what we do now is we consider um, something like this. Let's say we have a psychic cyclic angle, um, we substitute the formulas into it. So for this formula, I can change these quadrants into uh, quadrants. So Fn plus 1 of, of what? Of A1 up to A is 0. So this A1 would be our which would be Q1, and uh, this would be Q1 times 4K minus Q1, Q2, 4K minus Q2, etc. Up to Qn, 4K minus Qn, and the quadrant of the uh, psychic polygon. And that would be equal to 0. I mean, that would be equals, equal to zero. And uh, remember that if I have the Robbins formula here, then that would be um, Q1 up to Qn and the quadria equals zero, right? Um, and then I would like to introduce one formula. No, not so, formula. Sorry, uh, it's a theorem that um, I think Robbins or his colleagues proved. Uh, I don't know if you have sh uh, seen that. Is that R n of zero? I'm oh, sorry. I should put it like this. Um, Q one up to Q n of a equals zero would be equal to zero. No, I'm sorry, not, not zero, sorry. Uh, would be equal to fn I mean, not, not exactly equal, that would be related, but uh, um, I need to check out more about the uh, relationship. I'm not sure uh, what the uh, precise relationship is, but um, but I'm sure that the R the, this is a constant term. If I have the I write the uh, Robbins formula in terms of the quadria, in some in terms of a uh, one variable polynomial of a quadria, then the constant term in that polynomial would be equal to.
the antiple quad function or the formula. Um, from this tool, I could say that Rn of, or I should say Rn is related to Fn plus 1 suitably substituted, suitably substituted, um, Qj 4k minus Qj. So that's the formula. Um, maybe they're not equal, but uh, this maybe or maybe they exactly equal. But uh, at least there is such a relationship. Our n is and you can say a bridge. If I have known the antiple quad formula here, then if I want to find the n plus one antiple quad formula, then I can use this formula to find our n. Okay, so what does that mean? Um, so I have, so let's say I have found um, the triple quad formula, right? So what do I, I mean, uh, how should I put it? Um, if I have found the triple quad formula, so I know what this is, I know what F3 of Q1, Q2, Q3 is. Then let's say I want to find uh, let me think. Um, okay, let's say I want to find the Robbins formula for triangles. Okay, so L3 of Q1, Q2, Q3, A equals 0, will be the triple quad formula. So now I have a constant term in the Robbins formula for triangles. And, uh, but the point is that I also know that R3 of, um, Q1, Q2, Q3, A is equal to F4 of, um, A1, A2, A3, A where a1 aj aj equals uh q j 4k minus q j so that's the that's the formula and then i can maybe use these two relationship i can use it as a bridge so let's say i have f3 i want to find f4 then perhaps I can use L3 and then uh, guess the formula for L3, which would, I know the constant term, at least I know the constant term. And then if I have known the formula for the circum quadrants of a given, uh, I mean, of a cyclic polygon with given coordinates, so now I know, let's say I know the formula. How to f of how to find um, k from q1, q2, and q3. Then I can substitute that into f4, right? Because I know the quadrants for, uh, I mean, I know the circum quadrants. Then I can use that to find r3. Um, I can use r to add that to find the remaining term. But how can I go the other way round? Can I go the other way round? Let's say I have um, uh, let's say I have uh, out three. Let's say I already already have out three. Then if I want to find out three, then it's easy. I just substitute the last term. If I have R three, then I can find F four. But uh, yeah, or uh, this part I have not thought about before. I slot, uh, photo. Uh, I mean, video taping. Um, I don't know. I I I'm just still thinking. 
if I have F, let's say I want to find F5, can I use F4 to find F5 or R3 to find R4? So how do I find that? Um, of course, uh, the, the prerequisite is that I know how to find K from those uh, 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 coordinates, given coordinates. Uh, that that's the that's the preliminary um, given condition. So what is F five? Well, F five would be um, uh, uh, no. Let's let's put it this way. So F four of Q one, Q two, Q three, and Q four would be R four of um, of what of Q one, Q two. Q3, Q4, and the quadri of them being zero. Okay. And uh, so, what do I have? Um, this is F3. Mm. Ah, I, I, ah, yes. I know why this this works because the the thing is this. Um, you can think that lines are a very special kind of circles. So here we don't we have a straight line here, and you can think of this straight line as a circle of infinite radius. So what does that mean? That means we have to work in the projective plane. Right, we can have a projective circle, and projective circles would include lines because we can have, um, let's say, we can have a quadrant of that circle to be um, a point of the projective line, which would have a which would be a proportion. Let's say this, let's say this circle. Let's say you have quadrants uh, uh, one third, and then the in the projective line, we can say that this quadrant is one, two, three, because that's one third. But for this, then we can say that this of quadrants one to zero. Okay, so we need some kind of uh, inverse geometry to work on that. But uh, in general, if you have uh, gone through those technicalities, then you will have a line being a special kind of circles. So you can take these endpoints as a special kind of what we call cyclic n-gon, cyclic n the polygon, where you have a quadria, well, what is this quadria? This quadria will be zero. So, so basically, we, if we assume that the Robbins formula work also for uh, these kind of degenerate um, cyclic n-gons, then uh, if I have quadrant, I mean the quadria equaling zero, then this um, would be the cyclic uh, a so-called cyclic angle, which is the entropy quad formula. So that in that sense, I can I have proved that result that I have cited. Um, but the point is that how I, I I think this is a this can be kind of a stepping up, because I can relate the um let's say the fourth uh, the quadruple quad formula with the triangle Wobbins formula. And then the quadruple formula, if suitably adjusted, I can change these uh, A1 to A and A to become um, the... F so I can go from go from uh, this Rob third uh, triangle Wobbins formula to the quadruple uh, quad formula. And from this quadruple for quad formula, I can go into the constant term of the Robbins formula. Ah, given that I know how to find it, so I I I still need to f have a formula for the sum quadrants. Of course, that that's the assumption. Uh, yeah. So what about if I have k equals one? So let's say I I force the circum quadrants to be one. Then this would become four minus q one, right? This would be four minus q two. So then, then let's say um, we already know how to find those uh, quadrants, 
and kind of solve things. Um, what this means would be a situation here. The quadrant is one, one, right? Quadrant is one. So this is the second quadrant is one. And uh, then this would be the unicircle. This would, this would be a unicircle. I can uh, parameterize like um, T1 or U1, uh, T2, U2, T3, U3, etc. And uh, T and U uh, integers. Um, but uh, T and U cannot be both zero. So T U is not the point zero zero. So that's the case. Uh, where you can have well, then you can have a formula for those, uh, well, if you have given five coordinates, coordinates, how do you relate to the second uh, quotient of the circle? So you, let's say I have been given Q1 up to Qn. So how do you find that K? Well, that's a, that's a hard problem if you uh, go directly, but you can go the other way around. You can have a quotient one circle, which is the unicircle, and then let's say you have a um, yeah five points. Then you then these these quadrants can be easily found because they are given uh, as a spread. In fact, they are given as a spread. Uh, if I have got it right, I think they are given by. Um, Oh, I can find it directly. I can have this spread first. Let's say this. What is this spread? A spread as one. So this spread as k is equal to what is this equal to? Remember, what's this spread? This spread was uh, r over four k. So. Is a quadrant's uh, Q one over four, right? Then that makes sense. That makes perfect sense. And then this is um, what is this over four thing doing? Um, so Q one is four times S K. What is S K? S K is the spread between.